most likely the most important part of making a moving vehicle run. Fuel. <laughs> Without fuel, we wouldn't be able to go anywhere. Every vehicle is very different, requiring different types of fuel. Some vehicles are even so different that they have different processes when it comes to combusting and exhausting the fuel. The space shuttle and the jet dragsters that we have are very, very different in terms of fuel tanks. Yes, they're doing the same job, but they're doing it in completely different ways. The space shuttle external tank, so this really big orange tank that we have right here, actually carried all of the liquid oxygen and the liquid hydrogen. During liftoff and ascent, it actually supplied the fuel and oxidizer under pressure to the three RS-25 engines that we have under here. The solid rocket boosters, so these really big white boosters right here, were actually used as the primary propulsion for the space shuttle missions, and they provided the majority of the thrust within the first two minutes of the flight. After they burn out completely, they actually separate from the space shuttle and parachute back down to Earth and fall into the Atlantic Ocean. They are then recovered, inspected, refurbished, and then completely reused. Unlike the solid rocket boosters, the main external tank actually separates from the space shuttle later on and then breaks up in the atmosphere and then lands in the Pacific Ocean. Fun fact time! So have you ever noticed that the stripes on the solid rocket boosters are different? This is because it makes it easier to distinguish which solid rocket booster is the left one and the right one during re-entry into the atmosphere and during retrieval operations out in the Atlantic Ocean. So the external tank has three primary structures. It has a liquid hydrogen tank, an internal tank, and then a liquid oxygen tank. The liquid oxygen tank is located at the very top of the external tank, and the liquid hydrogen tank is located at the bottom. Between both of these tanks is the inter tank. It is the structural connection that receives and distributes all of the thrust loads from the solid rocket boosters and then distributes those loads between the tanks. These tanks work together to feed liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen into the space shuttle main engines to combust, producing thrust. The fuel tanks for our jet dragsters are a lot different when comparing to the space shuttle fuel tanks. These tanks are round because they are pressurized to about 15 psi, and the front of the tanks are bullet shaped for aerodynamics. These jet dragsters run on standard grade Jet A fuel. The fuel is run through an inch and a quarter fuel line at the back of the tank that is connected to the jet engine. It is then transferred to the afterburner and then the main engine fuel pump. The external tank and the jet dragster fuel tank actually do have a comparison though. So if you look right here, there is an internal baffle that prevents sloshing. These fuel tanks may be very different, but they're performing the exact same job of transferring fuel to an engine. All right guys, it's time for me to fuel up, so I'll see y'all later.